Welcome back to John's Films. Today we're learning to color grade and turn this into this. This morning I woke up, beautiful day outside, and I got a fantastic cut of drone footage here in Austin, Texas. Now with this, I've really been happy with the dynamic range of this drone. It's a Mavic 2 Pro. It does a fantastic job for a drone. However, you'll notice there's still some pretty significant noise down here in the darker areas of the image. While it did preserve much of the contrast that existed, it did blow out a bit in the clouds there, but for the most part, uh, for a drone, I mean, this thing flies 400 feet above the planet, looking across the city at sunrise. <laughs> I'm not real angry at it, but I wanted to color grade it with you. I thought, hey, this is a great, great day. I want to see it look beautiful. Let's do it. The first thing I want to do is clean up some of the noise down here in the darks. To do that, I'm going to clean up the noise in the entire image because there is a little bit of dancing up in the clouds, not nearly as much as there is down here. If I'm in the free edition and jump over to Fusion, I have a video on this, which is how to recreate noise reduction in the free version. Because noise reduction is, here in the studio version, a studio-only feature. Now I'm going to generate it. You know, we don't need it to be fantastic at the moment. I'm going to go faster, and I'll pop this up to about, I don't know, 7 will work. It's pretty aggressive, but we'll give it a whirl. Faster there, and we'll pop that up just, just a bit. Now, the two types here, temporal, looks from frame to frame to frame in your timeline, and it looks at the pixel over those course of those frames and tries to blend them better. And spatial looks at an individual frame, looks at an individual pixel, and looks around it and tries to say, hmm, let's look around me and see what should probably exist here. So those are the differences between the two different types of noise reduction. Now that I've got that added in there, I'm going to right click and add it to my node cache explicitly. That way it'll cache it in and then it won't try and recreate it because this can be computationally intensive. It will run in your GPU in studio, but it's still painful. The next thing that I'm going to do, create a new node by hitting Alt S. If you haven't used the node graph before, the green here brings the video from one node to the next. And it's like a pipeline. You create a, a, a full pipeline of uh, processing nodes. This allows you to name them. So this one I'll call NR. I know that means noise reduction. This one I'll call contrast. This one I'll call color. With this, your first instinct may be mask out the city skyline, clean up the down dark area here, and then go back and on the alternative of that mask, deal with the top. But because there's such separation, Check this out at my scopes. Because there's such separation, you can see here at the bottom, this is definitely going to be the bottom area, and these, this is going to be the top area. And because I want to keep the color cast the same, I'd rather not grade these as two separate images where, by splitting it by a mask or something. Instead, I'm going to split it and deal with it in separate luminance channels or luminance levels. Pretty much anything above 384, I'll deal with in the sky, and anything below is down here in the land. So there's a few ways to do that. Right now what I'll do is just hit a, let's go with the parallel node, Alt-P, and that is going to come off of my contrast, which I can create to even separate those further if I want, and I'll show you what that looks like. Come over to my color wheels. These bars down at the bottom are for your luminance or brightness, lift, gamma, and gain. This is your darks, your mids, and your high luminance values. So as you can expect, if I pull down, all the dark stuff gets darker. But for the most part, um, the gamma and gain don't get affected as much. Now, it, if you switch this over to your log wheels, you can see you're going to affect them even less. So I get a lot more separation there, and I do not drag down on those higher and fun fact, that's what this pivot is. It creates the pivot point, which is the separation level between the darks and the lights when you're adjusting. So I could crush my blacks and call that clean, or I can, so let's change that contrast back. Okay, so I'm going to pull down on that just a touch so that I can pull out and get better separation. The blues have some noise in them there, you can see. And I could split that chroma channel out and clean up that noise, but you don't see it too much. Uh, right, and I'd like to not mess with stuff if I don't have to. So I'll go to the top up here. When you are parallel mixing in a parallel node like we've got here, this is a parallel node, I hit Alt-P on the keyboard to generate this. 
you get two, three, four, five, however many layers you want. The bottom layer gets put on top of the top layer, so everything sandwiches down, and the one on the bottom gets overlaid on the top. Now this qualifier, I'd like to have on the top up here, I'm going to have my lights, and on the bottom, I'm going to have my darks. We'll start with the darks. I select the qualification tool here in the middle. It's called qualifier. And I only want to qualify at this point on luminance, so I deselect hue and saturation. That'd be color and color intensity. And now, when I mouse over my image, I have a eyedropper. I'm going to click my left mouse button and drag it across the dark areas. You can see here what this has done is mask to where only the dark areas are selected. The gray is not as selected and will not be affected. I could further modify it by dragging in my luminance panel here uh, by how much it's going to affect it. And I'm going to drag that to a point where I only get, say, the darker half of this image. And we'll pull in the buildings a little bit more. There we go. So now I have a pretty good qualification across it. I will now do the same thing at the top. And in this case, again, don't need the hue or the saturation. I'll do it against the bright sections of the image. And there we go. I've now got qualifications for my brights and for the darks. If you watch when you're doing this, you can look here at my parade chart. I can see the separation in the chart and ensure that I've got a very good break right there. In this case, it's right around 384, 256, somewhere in there. And what'll happen is I can color grade this. Let's say we turn all this dark blue and we turn all this bright orange. There we go. And now when I come out the back end of this and it mixes, I get the mix of that, which is orange on top, blue on the bottom. Really cool. Very minimal bleed between the two. And I can feather that quite a bit if I want to feather it and make it blend, which, let's do that. So the feather, here I am in my qualifier, I'm going to feather it out just a little bit with a blur radius here. You can see it's creating that blur right there. And I'll do the same on my blue one with the blur radius. That way there's kind of a meeting zone right there at the horizon. It'll draw people's eyes towards it. And now you can see where that is. So when it's less, obviously I don't want that to really be like that. When it's less obvious in the way that this is working, you can see here, it's quite aggressive <laughs> on the color wheel here. Fix that. And I'll start here on my darks. I'm going to pull it down just a touch. And I do that over here on my left shadow color wheel. This is with the log grades. I'm just going to go back to my primaries because I don't need to affect. There we go. A little too dark. All right. It's looking pretty good. Let's go reset the log. Primaries. Okay. So now we got that. A little darker, which should keep a little bit more minimal noise in there. So that's not terrible. I don't want to cast on this yet. I may two-tone color grade this, but we'll see. Up on the top here, I want to create more contrast in the clouds. It draws them out just a bit more. I can do that now that I've separated the channel out and only affect the top by editing this node down here that I separated with a qualifier. And I'll pull some contrast into it. You can see just pulling down on this lift color wheel is now creating that difference, and it's giving it quite a bit more. You know what? Given that, I don't care for how dark this got. So I'm going to pull that back up just a touch. There we go on the lows. Not bad. It is a little crushed. We can zoom in real quick with Control F and get an idea of what it looks like over time. I'm not mad at it, but I, I think it's too dark at the bottom. So we will come back into the bottom and pull that up. I'm going to use the midtones or the gamma this time to pull that up. Let's see what we get out of that. Oh, that's a lot more dynamic. You get a, a lot greater sense of the scope of it because you've got more color and more light in the bottom of it here. I like that gray no man's land too, the haze that's out there. Gives you the real idea it's the morning. So now I've decided I'd like to put in the top quarter of this frame coming downwards. I'd like to make that a little bit more blue to contrast with the yellow and pinks. To do that, I'm going to add a node here with an Alt S, again, only affecting the top. And then I'm going to add a gradient node and pull it down. There we go. This gradient node will affect anything that is not gray. So I take my gradient, start up at the top, 
and I will pull it to just where it doesn't clip off those clouds too much. There we go. The softness I can take up or down with the number or with the arrow. There we go. And I'm going to throw some blue into that. Let's just go crazy so that we can see what the effect is. You see the effect up here at the top. I don't need it to be that insane. When I'm messing with this offset wheel, you may notice the offset wheel is the entirety of the, the image. So it's every pixel that's covered. It doesn't matter if it's dark, mid-tone, or light. It's affected. Now let's see what we did there. Not bad. It turned it purpley. I don't need that much purple in that. So I'm going to go back down and pull it more towards a true sky blue. There we go. And now I'd like to add a little bit of yellow pink across the middle to blend the two parts of the image together. I'll do that again with another mask. This one I will pull a rectangular mask and feather it out on both sides to about where I want it to stop pulling. There we go. And again, where it is gray, my grade will not affect it. Where it is colored, my grade will. So I'd like to put in the brighter tones of this, it looks like a touch of yellow maybe. Mm, I like the yellow that's there. I just want to replicate it. So what I'll do is shop around a little bit. What I'm doing is grabbing the middle of the gain because that's the brightest portions of the image. And I'm very minutely moving it down towards the different areas of the color wheel like this. And maybe I want to reset it. I hit that up there. But I'm going to pull towards what I think is going to be a good color match for what I've got in there. And I'm, I can pull way out and see where I think it matches and then pull way back in to add less of that color. I kind of like that. Now in the darks, I know I also want to add some of that. So I'm going to try and replicate that a little bit. There we go. And in the darks, I'll do the same. That was the mid-tones. Here we go. Notice I'm getting a green cast to it. It's not what I want. So I'm going to fidget around a little bit and see what I can get. There we go. So that adds just a little bit of that hue to it. And now when I look at the rest of the image, you notice it's blue at the top. It's got that pinkish blend. I don't think it's blended enough. I don't know if you can see this. It's kind of pulled out. So we'll come here. Yep, sure enough, that's exactly where it was. I'm going to blend out the bottom a bit more. Let's see what that does. There we go. So now it blends down and feeds into the lower portion here. Now let's see what it looks like when it's playing through. Not as much noise. The grade seems to hold up as it moves. If you don't do a good job of qualifying some of those out, or if you set too harsh of a line on those masks that you're using, it'll flicker or it'll get to be real apparent as it's moving around, and that is not what you want. Jump ahead to a different part of our footage, paying attention to some of those areas in the outlying zones. Now, I probably wouldn't use this entire clip, but it's cool to see how it would color grade throughout. Lens flare looks really pretty good in pink. It's not the best lens flare ever, but I like the pink. That's the Capitol building here in Austin. It's kind of neat to see it fly behind everything with the sun there. All right. Yeah, you know what? I'm happy with that grade. Now let's look at it back in our timeline. We can turn the grade on and off here. You can see clearly I didn't even mess with saturation. I pulled color into it, but I did not mess with the saturation settings. But it really pops more. And so this may be a bit much for some folks, and you could go back in and tone it down here with your saturation as an overall image, desaturate it. But there's a big difference between what we did with our noise, separating the contrast, and then dealing with the different zones to give it the right color casts, and just pulling up the original and adding saturation to it. This is what you would get if you just pulled saturation into it. Undo that. And this is what you get if you separately treat the image. A much more balanced pink through the bottom with the cast and then a better touch of blue to add a color contrast at the top. So that's how I would color this specific drone footage of a sunrise here in Austin, Texas. If this has been helpful, feel free to buy me a coffee over at buymeacoffee.com, link below. Otherwise, hey, if you really did like this, do me a favor, 
hit subscribe on that subscribe button. I've got a lot of benchmarking, tutorials, tips and tricks for DaVinci Resolve. Thank you for watching and have a great day.